you go in moto camping. What's up, uh, good ride in? Hey everybody, welcome back to IMS Rides presented by Progressive. On this episode, Jesse and I, along with our friends at Royal Enfield and Moscow Moto, have put together a great guide for how you can begin to wade into the awesome world of moto camping. Whether it's for a couple of days or a couple weeks out on the roads and trails, we're breaking it all down so you can be prepared and comfortable when seeking adventure. The most important takeaway from this guide is learning how to pack as light and as efficiently as possible and investing in some great gear to make that happen. You can camp on any motorcycle, but adventure motorcycles have come into their own as some of the best motorcycles for camping, simply for their ability to crush highway miles and tackle off-road trails. But big ADV bikes can be expensive and heavy, and so we sought out a great and approachable alternative that's perfect for the new and existing rider. Meet the Royal Enfield Himalayan. It's an affordable and capable motorcycle that's built for adventure. What I like about this bike is how much fun it is to ride. Coming from a big heavy adventure bike, you jump on this, your feet touch the ground, you tractor through the most difficult trails, it's a piece of cake. So the fun factor is very high with this bike. Before considering what to pack, you need to know how much gear you can hold. There are plenty of different luggage systems for motorcycles on the market, but traditionally it's a toss up between hard panniers, soft bags, or a hybrid system of both. Our gear list in this episode is not meant to be an absolute, but it's great for two to three day trips on the bike, and it can even go beyond, but it maintains and focuses on creature comforts you want at camp. For those looking to lighten the load, rough it, and experience some more aggressive riding, you can omit some of these items. Behind me mounted on the Himalayan is the Moscow Moto Reckless 80 liter revolver version 3.0. This thing is an absolute unit and what I like most about it is it's a modular system which means it can fit on almost any motorcycle. It's hella durable, waterproof and super functional and one of my favorite features on it is the beaver tail. It's the top section which expands to accommodate awkward items or additional items like some errant firewood or to stash or discarded riding gear throughout the day like an underlayer. If you happen to be living on a motorcycle for three days to six months at a time and want one of the best modular systems on the market, look no further than the one behind me. The key to any luggage system is packing your gear low and as close to the bike as possible with the heaviest items in your kit in your right and left saddlebags. You want to do this to distribute the weight evenly but also to keep your center of gravity as low as possible. This way you're not upsetting the balance of your motorcycle whether you're riding on road or off. Before any trip, it's good practice to lay out all of your gear. You know, kind of like those super hip Instagram layout photos you see in your feed before somebody goes on a trip to show you what they're taking. There you go. It allows you to visually see what you're taking and how best to pack it. And also allows you a second chance to say, I don't need to take this with me. Ultimately, how you pack your gear comes down to your own little personal game of Tetris. But we will divide some of our items once they're packed, they're packed. For example, I pack my side bags with everything I take with me and use at camp. There's no reason for me to get to it throughout the day. If I do need something through the day, I keep it on my top bag, on myself, or in my tank bag. Let's face it, if you're gonna be out riding all day, and when you're finally done, wherever you camp, it's gonna be home for the night. A good night's sleep is perhaps one of the most important things to consider when moto camping. It's your home away from home, and ensuring that comfort throughout the night can make or break the entire moto camping experience. Remember, good rest is just as important as good riding. So an ultralight backpacking tent with Rainfly serves its purpose for a couple reasons. It'll keep you dry in wet climates, and it'll also keep you cool and or warm in a variety of others. It also provides you with a secluded space away from insects and can serve as another space to store gear or belongings during the night that you maybe don't want to keep on your motorcycle or outside. So there are some that say that tent poles don't pack. Well, that's a lie. With the Reckless 80, you get a rad tent pole bag. So you can fit all your tent poles in here. It rolls up so they're watertight, but you can also store other like long weird items like zip ties or my personal favorite, a hand pump for when I need to pressure down for off-road or to pump up air in my tire. So, if anyone says the tent poles don't pack, they're wrong. All right, so a great alternative to a tent 
is a hammock. They pack down relatively small, they're really lightweight, except you're not gonna be able to use them everywhere. If you're gonna be riding in the desert, well, good luck setting this up without any trees. Have fun with that, Jesse. I'm gonna go sleep in my tent. When it comes to getting a good night's sleep, a sleeping mat or inflatable pad is a must. It insulates you from the ground and it keeps you warm in addition to your sleeping bag. Best yet, it packs away small, takes up less space in your luggage. A great alternative for side sleepers is an ultralight cot like this one from Helinox. While it doesn't pack away as small, it's just as lightweight, it assembles quickly, and it keeps you above the ground. It'll also never spring a leak in the middle of the night. When it comes to a sleeping bag, don't be a cheapskate. Treat yourself to something nice. It's better to overspend than to underspend on a quality sleeping bag. Be sure to learn about how sleeping bag temperature ratings work and where and when you intend to use them. A zero degree bag like this is comfortable down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit and will make a zero degree night survivable. When it's hot out, it can be unzipped and slept on top of because you're sleeping inside of a tent and you don't have to worry about being eaten alive by any of the nippy critters. We all have to eat and drink and after a long day of riding, cooking up a hot meal and enjoying a beverage by a campfire is the best part of camping. And let's face it, you deserve to enjoy yourself. Unless you score a sandwich at the local market an hour outside of camp, dehydrated food is going to be your best bet. It takes up very little space in your pack, they're easy to make, they're full of calories, and pretty tasty too. And when it comes to cooking them, a packable stove like this jet boil is your best friend. Just pour some boiling water into the bag and chow down. Water is one of those items that can be easily accessed along any roadway or at a gas station, but transporting it can weigh down your bike and take up valuable space. But you need water to survive and function on a motorcycle. A water bladder like this one is the most convenient solution to carrying this most precious liquid. When it's full, it can be strapped to the outside of almost any bag, and when it's empty, it can be rolled up and easily stored away. Look. If you're roughing it and you want to save on space, some of these items are not necessary. You don't need a table. You don't need a really swank fire stove. You really don't need an awesome whiskey flask setup like I got. But I like to live the good life when I camp and then I ride how I want to ride. So when everything is packed up and you're off to your next destination for the day, having easy access to everyday items while you're riding, taking a break, stopping at the gas station, or just checking out some awesome scenic view, it's a great convenience. Some riders will opt for a small backpack with hydration bladder or a riding vest, and both are excellent options, and don't discount them. I encourage you to look into them both. In recent years, I've really enjoyed having a fantastic tank bag. That way I'm not encumbered with anything on my body. And, oh, hey look, it's my favorite tank bag. Let's take a look at what I got inside my bag. Your tank bag works great to hold all of your everyday items. Phone, wallet, multi-tool, knife, snacks, maps, batteries, point-and-shoot camera, headlamp, and an extra flashlight. I also like to keep a first aid kit and tourniquet in here as well. While attached to the bag right now, this Garmin InReach Mini stays in my jacket when riding and serves as my connection to the outside world where I'm riding someone with little cell service and it also functions as a rescue beacon in the event of an emergency. One of the best things about tank bags is that they can be removed and in the case of the Nomex, it converts into a small backpack that can go with you into a diner or on a short hike if you need to stretch your legs. Motorcycles are not without adversity and sometimes things can go a little sideways or break down so it's always important to be prepared. If you're heading out for a couple days, it's important to pack a tool roll to fix the most common and trip-stopping events. A flat tire is the one event that can completely ruin a trip, so knowing and having the tools to patch a tubeless tire or replace a tube is a must. You also want to assemble a tool kit specific to your motorcycle which will commonly contain wrenches, sockets, pliers, and some JB Weld and Quick Steel are always handy in a pinch. Also, don't forget an absurd amount of zip ties. Two items that are invaluable no matter what luggage system you choose are rock straps and a bungee net. These two items are great for strapping down items such as a, a bundle of firewood, wet clothes, an extra pair of shoes, or a six pack of beer. Last but not least, choosing great riding gear that's multi-purpose is a great way to save space. Consider gear that works well on the bike as well as being comfortable off the bike. What you see on me is the Moscow Moto Rack Pullover Top and Overpant. 
This outer shell is waterproof, windproof, it breathes well, and it's abrasion resistant, which makes it great for on the road or on the highway. Because it's chilly this morning, underneath this I have the Moscow Moto Jackaloft mid-layer, which insulates and keeps me warm. And against my skin are my compression garments with body armor, knees, hips, elbows, back, and shoulders. Layered items like this are advantageous because when I don't need some of them, I can shed them, stuff them on my bike, and get riding again. Gloves, helmet, boots, they're always par for the course, and that's a topic for another episode. Remember, great gear is worth every single penny. This simple kit, outside of a couple extra pairs of socks, chonies, spare shirt, is really all you need to keep yourself comfortable and protected when out and about. there you have it folks remember packing a motorcycle for a camping trip comes down to a couple factors the most important where you're going and what climate you're traveling into and not packing too much stuff be sure to get out there ride with your friends ask questions and find out what works best for your moto camping style don't forget to follow us on all of our social channels for more episodes coming soon and IMS Outdoors, which is coming to you in 2021. We've announced our full schedule and it's gonna be awesome. We're heading outside, a lot of demo rides, a lot of great attractions. Remember, ride smart, ride safe, and we'll see you out there on the road.